Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to do a fast-paced video showing you something in Manifold that, that you can do in Manifold that I, I think is impossible to do in any other GIS. We're going to uh, scrape some data from a website that provides the locations of uh, webcams in uh, France. Uh, so we can just uh, automatically click on one of those webcams and uh, yeah, see what the view that it shows. And uh, what I've done is uh, I've gone to the website and in question and using developer tools in Microsoft Edge I found the, uh, the JavaScript file which provides all the data uh, for the various webcams and here it is you can see var marker descriptors this is all this is all JavaScript I'm going to copy that right click and choose copy and let's move that off screen we're doing uh, going to do all this in Manifold System Release 9 by the way as well and here in uh, Windows Explorer I'm going to uh, create a new uh, text document and I'll call that uh, cams pop that open and uh, control V to paste and uh, you can see this is a UTF uh, file format and I'm going to delete start off right away by deleting this part of it because we don't need that that part of it right there and I'm going to come up here to the top of the file I'm going to get rid of this part which is a uh, JavaScript stuff don't need that either uh, and uh, now I'm going to save that file save as well we'll save it as cams yeah let's replace it okay uh, let's get that out of the way because uh, what I'm not going to do is I'm going to uh, open this in uh, uh, I'm going to open it in Notepad Plus because Notepad Plus is uh, more useful when you're doing things like replacing uh, carriage returns and line fields uh, line feeds and the first thing I want to do is I want to take this one huge uh, line and I want to split it up into uh, uh, a bunch of smaller lines and the way I'm going to do that is going to start right here this, this bit right there I'm going to take that copy and here in search replace we're going to take that and we're going to replace it with a uh, uh, carriage return. Let's see, carriage return, uh, new line, and we'll replace all, and that replaces everything into a bunch of uh, single lines. And uh, let's see what else we want to do here. Let's go, let's go back to the beginning, and I'm going to get rid of this bit right there. Because that was that's all kind of uh, kind of right at the start. So now I want to replace some of the things here that you know the various uh, uh, text bits. So this part right here, I want to uh, Control C to re to, to uh, copy. Let's do search and replace, and we're going to replace uh, that with. Uh, let's see what I want to replace that with. I just want to replace that with a uh, a single comma and a space character. Replace all, and uh, this bit right there copy back here replace that with a single comment in a space character replace all and as you can see I'm, I'm setting this up so that uh, I can uh, later format all this as a uh, as a CSV file and there's one more trick I want to do right here because I want to take this part which is the uh, JSON string right here and I want to replace replace the comma here in the JSON string because commas are something that CSV understands I'm going to copy that comma uh, with the, the, the two uh, uh, quotation markers in the, in the bracket. I'm going to replace uh, that sequence right there with a sequence of. I'm going to use a caret mark because a caret mark doesn't occur anywhere else in this uh, uh, file. Okay, so we replace with that and replace all. Good, we've done that so far. Now, what I'm going to do, I want to add an additional line right here at the beginning to add a name for name fields for all this. We're going to call the first one, let's see, uh, that's obviously a latitude and this is obviously a longitude and we'll call that num1 num2 call that we, I don't know what that is, call that location the next, right, then I'll call the last thing uh, JSON because it's the JSON string great so that, that looks pretty good, that looks like we're set up to import all this uh, data as a now as a CSV file, file, save as and we're going to call this a cams uh, CSV super Alright, uh, I don't need this anymore, so uh, I'm going to close that, I'm going to get my notepad out of the way, and now I can uh, uh, import this stuff into a manifold. And the way I'm going to do that for the, the CSV files, I'm going to click File, Create, New Data Source, because I'm going to import the C CSV files as a new data source, and the source is going to be uh, this uh, folder right there, CAM CSV. And uh, let's still note, just in case it doesn't understand, I really want to use a comma, we'll use that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's create data source, and uh, let's pop that open and see what it imported as a table. It looks like it did a pretty good job of importing the table as I expected. All right, super. 
So I want to take this table from the data source and put it into the project. Uh, and uh, having done that, I can get rid of the data source. I can double double click open the CAMS table, and now I can work with this uh, read and write and modify it. I'm going to change the schema on that. I'm going to uh, uh, first I'm going to add an identity field uh, and an index, and now I'm going to add a geometry field. And we'll call that field uh, geom. The uh, schema by dialog, by the way, now remembers the last uh, type that you've used, and previously uh, the last field that I created was a geometry type, so it remembers the geometry type. And the coordinate system I want, I want for that is latitude and longitude, because these are latitude and longitude values. Okay, click OK. Click Save Changes there, and I've just uh, set, created that field. Let's get rid of every, everything here except what we're going to work with. We're going to work with the JSON string right there. So with the tables, let's hide the latitude, the longitude, these guys here. We don't need that. We don't need that either. I don't need the MIFT T field. I don't, don't need that. What I want to do now is I'm going to take this JSON uh, string, and I want to manipulate some stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to restore the comma that's in there. So to do that, I'm going to use the Transform pane. and uh, the JSON string, what I've done, or replace text, I'm going to search for uh, the caret character, and I'm going to replace it with a comma. I can do a preview to see how that's going to look, and you can see that that does indeed do what I want it to do. Okay, so I got that right. Click Transform, and I've just now turned that into, into a legitimate JSON string again. All right, that's cool. So now what I want to do is I want to start extracting from that. I want to uh, copy, use the copy. Uh, template and I want to use uh, the JSON name value. So I want to copy the JSON name value and the first value I'm going to do is this guy here, the ID value. I want to copy the ID value and I want to put that into a result field called ID. I'm going to create a new field and uh, let's preview that so you can see what that's going to do. It's going to create a new field with these values in it that have been extracted from the JSON, str JSON string. Click transform and there's our ID field. Okay, next, as you guessed it, we're going to use the display time field. And uh, I'll do a preview again so you can see that's going to be a one. They're all pretty much a value of one. I have no idea what display time is, but you know, we're just going to extract it from the tables. So we get all the fields they had in the table. Click transform. Uh, the next one is going to be the group. And that's going to go into a field called group. Click Transform. Oops. Click Transform. There you go. And uh, next is going to be a thumbnail. So let's find thumbnail. Let's enter thumbnail. Click Transform. As you can see, it's uh, creating all these fields for me as, as I go along. And let's see what comes after that. I can uh, click Edit to see what's in here. So after thumbnail, there's last update. I'm just going to copy that so I don't have to keyboard it in. Control C to copy. And after that, that'll be there'll be uh, the uh, URL. Okay, so let's do the uh, the last update. It's going to come to a field called last update. Click preview, so you can see where that's going to go. Okay, let's click transform. And then the last one uh, was URL. That's the last uh, JSON entity that we're going to extract, and we're going to put that into a field called a uh, URL. I'll just click transform. And uh, now here in the layers pane. Uh, we don't need that long JSON string because we've now uh, extracted all those things this way. I'm not going to use ID or display time uh, or last update. Uh, so uh, let's just uh, hide those fields, display time and last update. And here's the URL. This is the one that we're really interested in. And let's turn a few things back on. I guess turn on latitude and longitude and let's turn on uh, geom. Okay, uh, and uh, what, what have we done so far? Let's uh, file, save as, and we'll call this uh, French webcams. Now uh, I'm going to right click on the URL field here and let's style that. Let's style that as a URL and let's style the thumbnail as a URL also. And uh, what have we done so far? We've created a table that has all these different webcams on it. Now what I can do if, if I like is I can uh, right click on any of these uh, and click open URL and what it'll do, it'll pop it open in uh, my default browser and here's Microsoft Edge. So and if I want to change that to you know something else like for example uh, well, let's right click on this one and click, uh, no let's click down here, right click and choose open URL. 
These are all webcams on highways in France. Some of them are more than webcams. Now, it'd be interesting to have these as a uh, map as opposed to have them as a list in a table, right? So uh, let's do that. Uh, and uh, that's easy enough to do. The first thing we'll do is we're going to create a geometry here. I'm going to use the transform pane here. And so go back up here and we'll choose the geom field. Oops. Right, and what we're going to do is we're going to compose the geom field. Now it's very important to get your X's and your Y's right. So the X is longitude. Uh, so let's click a longitude field and the Y is latitude. Okay, and the result is going to go into the uh, geom field. Super. So let's click transform. We've just created geom. And now what I can do here in the uh, project pane is uh, let's call this, let's rename this. Let's call this uh, rename related. Let's call this uh, the cams table. Rename. I like to name things this way. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, new drawing. The new drawing is going to be the cams table. It's called it's, it's called the new drawing cams. That's why I renamed the table. And now let's create drawing. And now what I can do is I can create a map based on the uh, cams table. I'm going to right click on that and choose create new map. And I'll use Bing Street Map as a background layer and kill create map. Now when I pop open the map. Uh, you can see we have all those dots, and this shows all the different dots that are there. And let's let's style these so they come up uh, a little bit brighter colored. Let's use bright green, and uh, let's make them uh, seven points in size. So now, if we uh, zoom in here to various uh, cams of interest, let's say right here in Paris, uh, this is probably on the the Perifrique. So let's uh, alt click that one right there. You can see here uh, all these uh, fields that we have that are available to us and there's a thumbnail and let's right click on the URL and see what that opens up. And uh, here we go, there's a view of the periphery. This is actually real time uh, in France. Uh, this, is, this is actual live as we're watching it. You can see the periphery is already starting to clog up there a little bit. Uh, let's see, uh, let me go down here uh, to uh, some place that uh, near near the house. Oh, on the way to Chartres of course, everybody loves that. Let's see what the uh, toll plaza is like here. Uh, so let's uh, let's I'll click on this and uh, choose choose the URL for that. And uh, there's the toll plaza. So you can see now's a good time to be uh, heading out of Paris because uh, uh, you can uh, you can actually get there. It's uh, <laughs> it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, you can do this uh, you know all over France as much as you like. Let's uh, control click on that tab. Hmm, what's a more interesting place to see? Uh, Montpellier, uh, uh, Monaco. There, let's uh, I'll click on that one, and let's see what that gen what that that has for a webcam. Okay, so that's the uh, sunny south of France. It's the highway near Monaco. Uh, so what did we learn uh, how to do in this video here? Uh, uh, I, I think uh, you've you've seen how we could uh, we use the uh, transform pane to extremely rapidly uh, to extract things out of the uh, the JSON uh, uh, field to create a uh, to uh, create a independent fields of what were the JSON contents and uh, let's do a few one more thing that we can do because some of these things uh, this came off of a website so they use uh, characters here like uh, uh, the e acute uh, symbol the web symbol here which is right there. And we'd like to change those, so you know that that can get a little bit tedious. But so how do you change those? So uh, that's easy enough to do. What we can do is here in the transform pane. Uh, let's go here and choose the uh, what is it location field? Okay, in the location field, what I want to do is I want to replace the text, and the t text I want to search for, I want to search for uh, that text right there. And here from uh, another website that I've gone to is a character entity reference chart. There's the e acute character reference. So I can do is I can copy that character. I just highlighted that character and copied it. And then I'll just uh, right click here and I'll paste. So I'll replace all instances of e acute with that. Click transform. And you can see that's now the correct uh, page. Uh, page of course is a toll plaza or toll road. And also the entree there, you know, replaces all. So, you know, you can go through this in all these places where, for example, the e grab, that's an e with an uh, accent grab. Uh, there, you know, replace all those. It's a little bit tedious, but you know what can I say? That's uh, what you get when you you know, scrape data off websites. So, 
anyway, what we've seen how to do here is how convenient and easy it is to use Manifold to uh, manipulate tables. And it's just absolutely spectacular at manipulating data and attribute data and tables. And it's not just the uh, analytic stuff uh, either. It's uh, you know, it's, it's simple things like text manipulations. And because Manifold is parallel, it all works. This you know, it can do this whether you have a billion records and not just a you know relative handful like we have here. That's the one thing that we've seen in the school. The second thing that we've seen in school is the ability to uh, have a URL type field to right click on that and choose open URL. Because uh, when you when you do that sort of thing, um, let's see, with the, uh, air discovery, it's off to Dijon. Okay, that's the uh, a uh, what do you call it a uh, service area, rest area. And there we go. There's a, in Burgundy. There's the you know, the exit to the rest area, right? That's off here, where there's typically a restaurant, some other stuff. And on this side, there's a rest area too. The rest area is on off French highways. If you haven't had a chance to uh, travel, the out outer routes is, are just uh, you know they're wonderful and uh, uh, astonishingly good food for highway food. Uh, so what we've seen also is we've seen how you can do uh, URLs here, and you can use this URLs to do all sorts of wonderful stuff. For example, you can uh, have email uh, accounts here. So if you have a, a list of contacts and you want to email somebody, just right click on that and you know launch that email. Uh, you can do things like uh, uh, launch PDF files. For example, if if you have a map here that's not a map of a web webcams, you know, so you want to look at where you know what's going on in the various webcams. But let's say you have uh, you know a, uh, a drawing that shows a f or a map that shows a you know, facilities like, you know, a factory outline or something like that, and you have uh, a bunch of symbols that show different types of machinery in the factory, you might want to right-click on one and uh, say open a PDF that's associated with the user manual for that uh, uh, for that machine or, uh, you know, photograph or, you know, whatever. Uh, or even uh, use it to launch processes. Uh, for example, there's a, one of the examples in the user manual, you know, that shows you how to use the styling for table fields, uh, shows you how to launch a remote desktop. So if you have a, you know, if you work, if you routinely connect to a dozens of different computers, you know, with using RDP, you can just right click on, you know, the one that you're interested in doing and launch an RDP session to that. So that's just uh, really super and it's really fast. And when you combine it with Manifold's ability to work with tables and handle data and table attributes like this, uh, it's just a wonderfully uh, smooth and uh, supple and convenient system. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick video. Uh, it's kind of amazing. I kind of went through this all in a uh, single pass. This hasn't been edited. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you see, tell your friends. Thanks for watching, and goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.